fun. Welcome everyone. My name is Ida Farhat. Uh, welcome to Conscious Heart Solution and my guest, Miss Amy Pomar. Amy, welcome to Conscious Heart Solution. Thank you for coming on. Thank um, you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to actually, I'll wait till the end. I wanted to introduce guys. Um, those of you that have been listening to my show for some time, I really want to get these salves out there, uh, soulful salves. They have 200 milligrams of CBD. They're really good for neuropathy, um, any aches and pains, deep tissue pain, uh, and they're great to re replace cannabinoids in the body. So I'll I'll show these a little bit more later on in the show or before we end. Amy, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Yes, please. Uh, so Amy, I'm going to share with everybody a quick um, introduction to who Amy is. I call her a multidimensional artist. She calls herself uh, a abstract artist. Is that what you said? Or... Yeah. I, I, I mean, there's really no label we could put on, <laughs> you know, you're, you're a very, you're creative and you, she share, she draws visions that she sees from multi, a multidimensional aspect of, of being able to see into timelines and other dimensions. Um, so Amy Pomar is a 53 year old wife and mother living in Jacksonville, Florida. She's had experiences that change her life forever, uh, which has ignited her art and her drawing and her creative expression and her vision. Uh, so Amy, do you mind please share and elaborate a little bit more with the guests, with myself? Sure. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I was um, just having my normal everyday life and existence. Um, I'm an only child and um, in 2007, my mom I went into hospice and I, being the only child, spent the next three weeks with her um, as she went through her, you know, dying process. And, and um, the last few days of that process, I had some experiences that were undeniable and unmistakable and completely not what I expected. Um, as she... Um, as she was nearing the her exit time, um, I was able to have visions of, um, you know, uh, God coming down and, and waiting for mom and then having an understanding of, of her soul and, and have these experiences kind of um, shown out to me in daydreams. And I thought for a lot of the time that it was just because I um, was so exhausted and so tired. Um, but, um, uh, so, so mom, it passed and, um, probably about a year and a half, two years later, I started, uh, hearing or not hearing, but, um, um, having these knowings about things that I ha would have no interest in knowing, um, you know, ancient aliens just kind of started coming on TV and, and they would, um, drive me nuts. Um, but they would sit there and they would explain something that, you know, I could sit there and daydream about, and then I could add to the conversation, but they um, just kept you spinning in circles. So you never got any resolve to it. You only got the emotional tie-in and it would make me so mad because they never gave any answers. And so I started um, telling everybody the answers. And um, when I started doing that, it just, everything just kind of started falling in place. And um, it's been a long, crazy, ride and I have met some amazing strange people who I never thought would exist in my lifetime and they live in your neighborhood and um, to start explaining a lot of this stuff I started drawing um, not because I was an artist I'm not I got a D in art and I was proud of that um, but uh, you know how, how do you explain that the you know the pyramids can be moved through humming and vibration and then you know how do you explain um, the trap door on the bottom of the sea you know and and how do you explain uh, these things and, and that ancient aliens is trying to explain for you and 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 um, so 
well, once I started giving in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I, can I just chime in for a second? So you're speaking yeah. of ancient aliens and I do have a close dear friend. I consider a friend and somebody I care about deeply. He and his um, beloved uh, both were Michael Lee Hill. He's been a guest on my show before and mm -hmm. he was on ancient aliens. I know that there's a narrative that these, you know, people in higher echelons, if you will, mm -hmm. definitely try to control the narrative and what it is that we know and, and yeah. how to, you know, have certain narratives that they want us to go, you know, mm -hmm. and, and belief systems that they want to um, keep mm -hmm. us. Uh, yeah. So it, 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 and, and I never expected that um, a soccer mom in Jacksonville, Florida would ever encounter uh, any people or any anything um, that was outside of the norm, you know, and um, as time progressed and I started having, being more open with what I could do, um, uh, the drawing thing really threw me for a loop for a long time because I just don't draw. And so I couldn't explain how all of a sudden I have these drawings. And then the drawings only took me five, 10 minutes most of the time. Um, and I would just sit and draw one after another. And sometimes they would be uh, flowers and geometry. And then the next thing they would be would be some type of um, uh, f being of some sort, uh, either an angelic being or um, a person in some situation. Um, and then the third one would usually be some type of mechanical process. And, and so for years, I would draw one right after another. And sometimes they would be the same color. Um, and so they would go together and sometimes all three of them would be so different and it wouldn't be till, you know, years later that I would be able to say, oh, this picture goes with this picture. And um, so, and I kept thinking, you know what, if I can do this, somebody else is doing this too. And I've got to go find some answers. Okay. So just real quick, for those of you that are listening or will listen to this in the future, my YouTube channel, Conscious Art Solutions, Amy and I met at my office or in the salon where I work at. Mm -hmm. And do you want to tell the story of how we met, uh, Amy? Because I, I think I tell people, well, because first off, I use it, you as an example of being a seer, right? Yeah. Because, so, go right. Ahead. So go ahead and share. Do you remember well, that day? I, yeah, of course. Yeah. It was yeah. just like a few weeks ago too. Um, right. But um, it's funny, my husband, my husband likes to get his hair cut down there. Um, the man that works at the place where, you know, where he was getting his hair cut. I actually met him years ago when he worked at a different salon. And then he worked at Winn-Dixie for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and then now he and his wife are down in this other little center. And so George has finally found him and, and, and likes to get his hair cut. And, um, he wanted me to go and I really didn't want to go, <laughs> didn't want to go sit in the salon. Um, but, uh, but I did. And, um, and you were there and you were kind of, um, running around in the back. Um, and so what happens for me now is I start feeling, um, it's, it's almost like a magnetic type feeling. Um, it's, it's, I, I, I stop and observe the energy and then I match the energy of what I am experiencing. Like for the, for in this occasion, it was the experience of sitting in the salon and watching you do your your thing and my husband kept saying go get her card you like to do that stuff you like to go get all the salon stuff yeah 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 and and so I said all right and um but but really I just wanted to let you know that I had seen you um because once I got up closer to you um without knowing anything about you I recognized you, um, and um, which is sometimes awkward, you know, when I meet people because sometimes I, I know that there's somebody or that that there is some, you know, 
just just the act of seeing somebody uh, for who they are for a brief second in whatever form that is um, or whatever what's ever being out there at that moment um, can be life changing um, for some people um, and it, it, definitely well, for me. Okay, so so and I appreciate your yeah you know, that was lovely and I'm very <laughs> glad that that I met you, Amy. But my recollection is, is I was coming out, so I do ionic detoxes, and most of y'all that listen to the show know that, and I was coming out, going to go, I had a client in my office, and Amy says, hi, and I said, (laughs) hi, and I thought she was going to ask me about ionic detoxes, she said, I said, is there, you know, do you have, is there, do you have questions for, about the ionic, no, she said, I'm here to see you. And I said, okay, do you have any questions about ionic detoxes? She said, nope, but I just want you to know I can see you. And I'm like, okay, well, it just so happened. I mean, I knew what she meant by that, but an everyday person may not know that, you know, understand what, where you were coming from with that. It may, yeah. Well, I do that with people. I, I, I handle lots of, I handle everybody in a different way. So some people, Fair enough. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, so but, but I, it is, it has become the start of a newly uh, a befriending. We are becoming mm-hmm. friends and we talk yeah. occasionally and she's got a family. I, I don't, but I do reach out to her occasionally. And this is how things happen. My whole point in telling you the story is, that we are recognizing more people are coming online and are recognizing we we are recognizing each other at the soul level and when you hold a high vibration of light and a great deal of compassion love and empathy in your heart um it's not hard to see one another we attract our own kind so that doesn't mean that life is all love and light and everything's beautiful you know i don't like to give that kind of impression when I talk about light because light well, no is in, and yeah we're human we're not supposed to you know yeah. if everything was all we wouldn't be I mean well we if we you know so our soul came here for certain lessons for sure right and uh those lessons I mean if I want to use the word required but it's not so but it it is maybe there's another word but I'll use that one for sake of everybody understanding there are certain lessons we're required to complete and and learn in order for us to uh move through our evolutionary process so that we can become learned beings and spiritually evolve and grow that's at an individual level and as a collective and we are right now uh well go ahead yeah what do you say to that well you know it's it's been very challenging for me to understand um, the egos and the um, old ways of doing things. And, uh, you know, because a, a lot of times I'll be able to have a conversation with someone about XYZ, um, but with no formal background. So once, once that happens, it's kind of, you know, it's, it gets kind of frustrating. Um, I, I think, um, so I've learned that, um, it doesn't really, well, everybody's perspective is their own perspective. And, and, you know, we have this kaleidoscope of information that falls down and, and, and reasserts itself all the time, same papers, same colors, same shapes, just, you know, every time we switch it, it's an, it's a new view. And, um, you know, as I'm starting now, you to- You want to explain that? Because I understand what you're saying, but a lot of people yeah. wouldn't understand what you're referring to there. Well, you know, it's an easy example um, for many views or multi-dimensional views or met, compart- you know, many compartmental views or however you want to put it is um, I can explain it by uh, just us being human. When we are um, growing up, we are a friend, we are a daughter, we are a sister, we are a cousin, um, we are a schoolmate, we're a friend, we get older, we're a girlfriend, we get older, we're a boyfriend, uh, a husband, a wife, now a mother, now a grandmother, and, 
And all of these different aspects are you. You are part, you are everything that I've named, but it, but you can't always be all of those things all at once. You know, you can be a daughter in front of your mother. Sorry, I got a piece of hair thing. You can be a daughter in front of your mother, um, but you're also a mother in front of your daughter. And, and so how, how, you know, how can you be all these aspects at once and you, you, that you just kind of are. And, and so when people well, can I are... respond to that for a minute? Yeah. You mind? Okay, so those are different. So we could call them different roles that we play in order for our soul right. to have an experience in order for it to grow right. and learn and gain wisdom through, right? Um, so the problem, well, I, I won't say problem, but a lot of times we identify so with these roles that we have and we forget at the core of our being is that we are our soul here to right. have these experiences, these kinds right. of relationships in order to grow and evolve and so forth. The goal, you know, it's like we go through the attachment of mm -hmm. being attached to our children, our husbands, our wives, mm -hmm. our mothers, our sisters, whoever the character is playing. Because actually, if you want to get to, you know, from a higher perspective, they're all you. Mm -hmm. quite literally an aspect right. of yourself yes. get sharing it yeah so one of the pictures one of the pictures that i sent um over uh to you for this broadcast was it looks like an air plant it just kind of goes in it and it has these little air shoots that go with it um it, it's just a it looks like a, a flower um and uh, that's that's my best representation of a soul um you and want to speak to that Please do. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it took me a long time to understand. We actually have like three different kinds of, of ways of being here. We have our, um, you know, we have our organic body, which is our frame, which was, you know, born in, you know, I was conceived in Idaho. I was born in, in Indiana. I, my grand parents were from Ireland and and so you I have this organic body that is rich in history um and and rich in history and the locations that it came from too so you know you might have an infinity or a calling for um oh here's an example my um my grandparents were from Poland and and so we've got you know several generations of Polish before they came here and I love amber and I, I, I like amber jewelry. I like amber in boxes. I like amber a lot. And amber is mostly found in the forest and in Poland. So my organic body probably somewhere in some time has a lineage of amber foresting people. I don't know. Um, but so the organic body would come from there. Um, that, and that's not necessarily where your soul is from. Um, and then we have our present body, which is here. Um, this is how we uh, express ourselves through our personalities, through all of the uh, different ways we wear our hair. Um, it's an expression of the soul. And we have so many different ways of expressing ourselves because our, our soul has so many different opportunities. Um, second by second. And, and, you know, my soul now wasn't the same soul we started with five minutes ago. And, you know, it's going to continue to, to, to grow and expand. And, and um, so I use my current body for that. And that's my life lessons. And then the third way of viewing things is, um, is you know, your imagination and your daydreaming and, um, and your dreams in the middle of the night and, and your experiences there. And, you know, they... <clears throat> I've been thinking a lot about past lives and, and how, you know, how you read your uh, past life energy and how you would even know where to even start. And uh, I've meditated on that and quite a bit lately. And, and I, I keep coming back to the same daydreams, you know, when my, when my daydream opens at the same place every single time, you know, maybe there's something to that. Maybe that is more familiar that, um, you know, maybe I should spend some time exploring that in a, in meditation and daydream more. 
Um, but really what I'm doing is I'm letting my soul become multidimensional while I'm here. So I'm here experiencing, um, you know, I'm sitting in this physicality now and my soul is daydreaming other locations. So, you know, before uh, people would say, oh, no, 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 that's not how you be our, you know, multidimensionally. That's not how, that's not how it works. Um, but why, why not? Why wouldn't it work there? We're not going any place here. So go ahead. you're not going any place. Is that what you said? Yeah. I mean, I'm here. here. I can, I can daydream other places. Um, I can out of body travel. Right. Okay. Um, but I always so come are, back. So you are going then. So you're, so, so it's my understanding. I mean, and I'm not here to debate who's right or wrong because there is no yeah. right or wrong. Right. Everybody's experiences are there. It's all right. I, on, that's right. And I respect everybody. <laughs> right. So what I was going to say was, well, I surely do travel and, yeah. um, and some of it I'm aware of, fully aware of where I'm at and who I'm with and sometimes not. Um, yeah. But I definitely know, well, I, I will say this. It is a knowing that our soul leaves the body when we're resting at night, right? Because we have other things we're doing. We are so magnificent and yeah. big Our because not only do we have our own spark of the div divine within us our own our soul and but there are some would suggest else's. that they're huh we're connected to everybody else's spark too well that's right but some are walking around that don't have a spark amy <laughs> this well, is what i was gonna say well i hate to say it it's true well everybody has their own perspective i respect yours mm -hmm. but i can say you know with enough research and no, becoming aware of dumbs and you're aware of dumbs and and mm -hmm. you know and um genetically and, and, you know i know they i know they exist and i know they're all around and and everything and lord knows i'm sure i've run into quite a few of them in my lifetime um well but... i mean there's oh some would suggest i have ai that runs from that runs through my body and i'm quite open about yeah. that i know that i'm a Pleiadian. Yeah. Uh, soul and I know I originated in Lemuria and and my soul progressed mm -hmm. and so forth and so um, do I have full memory of all that absolutely not I would like it but I don't know that it's necessary for me to grow and continue to do what I'm here to do well, and if, that's a yeah. very that's a very important point and that's a very important thing to have too because you know really what you need is to have faith and, and really, it's like having enough faith in yourself, knowing that if I am all of this, that I'm doing and I'm taking care of things like I'm supposed to be doing, because down here, you know, I'm doing what I know I should be doing here, here now. And, and um, you know, with all the division that's happening in this world right now, um, and I, I think people are now starting to get to the point where they can come around and say, you know what? Um, you don't have to be friends with me and I don't have to be friends with you, but I respect the fact that you live in my neighborhood. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look, you know, I'm not gonna yell at you and you don't yell at me and let's help each other. And I, I think we're hopefully getting back to, to that a little bit more. Um, I, I think that, I think that the atrocities that are being committed and the division and the, uh, and the filth and the muck that they've created and uh, lately is, you know, people are waking up to who they really are on the inside. And, and I, you know, I don't think that many, as many people could do that if they didn't have such dramatic examples of what they are not. You know, it's, it's as, as we start to stand up to say, you know what, um, uh, you know, I am this, I am a wife, I am a mother, and I'm going to play these roles. And I, you know, because that's what I want to do. Um, you know, I don't want to be someone who is considered uh, a danger to others, because I do or do not follow a protocol that may or may not be um, well, in my best interest. I appreciate and, that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I, I, you know, no, if you're referring to the jab, we don't say, you know, that's the word we use and they're poisons and I'm totally against their poisons. I mean, um, you know, I say pick your poison because really at every turn we're being um, bombarded with, I mean, all kinds of stuff. But I went down those rabbit holes for years mm -hmm. and I just mm -hmm. won't give it my energy. So, I mean, every once in a while, I'll still get triggered here or there. But at this point, it's it's just about being proactive and making yeah. conscious, well-educated, well well-researched decisions for ourselves, our families, our children, so forth, so on. Yeah. And that so, and so that I, is so necessary right now for you for people to become who they really want to be on the inside. These decisions, making these decisions right now, and and coming back and building your self confidence and your self care and your self compassion, you know, um, is is vital right now. And and as that happens, you know, it's kind of like um someone who is you know out with their, you know, they're addicted to fentanyl, right? And, and they're, you know, they've, they have a completely different life six years, six months after they did, you know, six, six months ago. And uh, because of the, the consciousness that is that drug use, but, um, you know, they didn't want that. Nobody wants that, you know, nobody wants to be out of control and then thrown out and then being controlled by a drug. And, and, and I think that as we are able to have more compassion for ourselves, then we're going to also be able to offer more compassion to other people. And it doesn't mean you have to go be friends. It doesn't mean you have to go feed the, you know, you know, throw the money on the corner or whatever. Sometimes just smiling at them, you know. I think uh, a lot, a lot or, more but, you people, know, I mean, I, okay, so this is the way I see, I mean, I appreciate everything you just said. I mean, you know, yeah, I, but I think I, I'll, I'll speak for myself for sure. Um, you know, I, I'm a very polite, respectful person and I like to say hello to people and hold doors and respect my elders and be kind and, um, you know, say please and thank you. I think all those things are, would serve us all well if we had some manners mm -hmm. and went back to some old fashioned ways of doing things for sure um right. yeah but and, how do you feel and, about yourself but there are, well, when you do that? well what i was going to say to you amy is there are a lot more uh behaving in this way than there are not from my perspective yep. at this point i'm running yep. into more and more people like yourself and other people that are very kind very loving mm -hmm. very compassionate very helpful and i don't focus on the ones that aren't anymore it's not my yeah. business i thought about that today i pulled up to I went to go I had to run into Kohl's for a second and a woman left her uh her cart her you know her pushing cart or whatever it's called the, the, the cart for the for the store in the middle of the parking lot pushed it over by the curb and I'm thinking you know I appreciate that I make it my business to take the cart back and put it back where it needs to be rather than leave it in the middle of the the parking lot but Everybody thinks what my point in telling you the story is everybody thinks what they're doing is more important than the next, right? Mm -hmm. So we can all slow down and be considerate of others and our surroundings and people that may, you know, um, need to reach out and, for some help. Yeah. But and it, it gets easier when you, uh, when it's, it gets easier to be that when you, um, well, you make a conscious decision to do that. That's right. what I say. Yeah. It's not a, it really is. It's really that simple. Like I stopped saying to myself, Amy, try, I want to try and do this. The Katie and I just, the producer had a conversation about this earlier and she pointed something out to me. And I said, I appreciate that because it's like, we keep, I keep repeating myself, you know, mm -hmm. because I want to be assuring or I want to, you know, am I trying to convince somebody of something? Rather mm -hmm. than doing that, either you do it or you don't, right? right. And until yeah. you're ready to do it, keep it to yourself till you do it. Mm -hmm. Like it's right. not, I'm, I'm trying or I'm hoping or exactly. I'm- Exactly. Right. That's and, all. And, and, and you yeah. know what? That must be what's on the, 
unity consciousness grid today too is you know there are you're not you know you're doing it or you're not um which is a very earthbound way of linear thinking too you're this or you're that or you're not but and and i wrestled with that for a little bit too because i you know how can i be so definite this or that but in this occasion with these two choices i choose this way so it's just kind of a choosing a path but it's it's naturally happening that people are starting to um to, to go back inside become a little more internal um, listen to their messages um, that they're getting from from the inside, which is, you know, the the messages of love and compassion and unconditional consideration. And not everybody's and, getting um, those messages right now. Yourself. Unfortunately, they, not everybody's getting those messages. Some people are yeah. very angry and very frustrated and really mm -hmm. want to blame everything else. I was one of those people mm -hmm. years ago. I was so angry that I became you, aware of what yeah. I became aware of. And then I realized, guess what? Hey, while these things may be happening and yes, some, some very horrible things have happened to me and I've done some horrible things that ultimately I'm responsible for myself and there's nobody else to blame. There is nobody to blame. It all, it all comes down to us choosing at a soul level. Just, yeah. That's the evolution of your soul right there yeah. is coming through and cleaning away all of the things that, don't serve you and people when they start hearing the internal call um to and it's really just about yourself it's really you know it's 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 your own self telling you your own self things and and um when you don't listen to your own self because your own self knows you best oh i was very i i totally get that i was uh i what's the word i i uh, self betrayal was a big issue for me for a long time um and i i practice on a daily basis not to betray myself not to say yes when i mean no not to right. you know or say no it's when i so really want to say yes yeah yeah and then you have to work through all of the different ways that you say yes when you mean no mm -hmm. you have to you say it with your parent you say it with your stranger you say it, you, Sure. you know and all of those until you can amend the the what makes you um make those choices you know and, and you bring it back and 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 heal you know it's splintered it's just all these splintered pieces and but really it's just one the same issue in a thousand different forms and and then well, letting that's it why go. integration work and healing is so okay. needed and people don't mm -hmm. realize but you can get to a point you know i'm a firm believer um and i really want to turn this conversation to a different direction and really talk about your art because that's mm -hmm. you know i think would be helpful for the listeners because they can see it uh being shown and maybe you can refer to some of them mm -hmm. but what i was going to say was integration work you know, I'm, I often say in posts, in my posts, we never arrive. One yes. thing I know for sure is life has always changed. And mm -hmm. the goal is to practice being in the, in the moment and living your purpose the best you're humanly capable. That is right. becoming, we are always becoming. And we go through yeah. growth spurts. And sometimes it feels like we're going, you know, for this is my experience. I can't speak for others, but I'll, I'll say my experience is that I may step five steps forward and then I have seven back, but then all mm -hmm. of a sudden I jumped and leaped forward because I've now gotten the me the lesson that maybe I didn't, you know, get mm -hmm. in full in its completion, which afforded me to move forward. If that makes sense, right? Yep. And and we have to make the 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 choice to say, you know, I'm not a victim, and I choose right. to stand and and, and, and empower myself. Even yeah yeah i'm i'm doing that right now i am um, you know i i love talking to people um i spend most of my you know my if i if anybody has an etheric job assigned to go and t talk to people it would be me um i talk to everybody but i i it in my neighborhood um i'm a real big proponent of my neighborhood but so when I run into other people who have knowledge or they have, you know, they're writing books or they're doing this and there's, believe me, there are just 
wherever you are in life, there's, you know, 50 more people that know this knowledge around you someplace and, and which is by design, it's, it's a, uh, you know, our awakening to our consciousness um, and understanding our consciousness before we die and have to come back and repeat our lessons of consciousness, um, you know, having having consciousness of who, who our soul really is and how we're all interconnected and how we work together before we leave this planet um, allows us to bring in, you know, the, the, the heaven on earth or the new world or, or whatever it is. And there's not room for, for other things. And, you know, I realized today that I get real jealous when I talk to somebody who knows as much or more than I do about things. I'm like, well, how come I wasn't the one to be able to bestow this, you know, stuff on you? And I, I realized um, how long I've been working on trying to just be okay with just not being an expert or being the only one or, or, or something. And that's been really hard. Um, it's been really hard to step aside and watch other people and to be an observer of other people. Um, and I'm so thankful for, you know, us getting sent home for a while, um, because that really was a, a good time to kind of break uh, the false perceptions of what other, what you thought you were versus other people. And, uh, and it kind of just leaves you with the most simple plan. Um, my art is one of those things. And, and when I figured out uh, what it actually was and how it was coming through um, and what it could be used for, um, you know, I, I thought, oh, well, great. Everybody will want to know how to do this or, or something. And, and um, everybody well, has there's a lot of, what there's a, should yeah. do. Yeah, there's a lot of people that do multidimensional art. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you're one of them, but yours is unique to you. So I know you right. and I were up late one night having a conversation yep. about uh, yep. some of this of what you just shared. And and I would say to you that you have your own unique gift to oh, you, absolutely. Amy. So don't worry about, you know, well, I would, I would I highly encourage, well, when you say the word yeah. jealous as if, Wow. You want to be the only one to be. Well, then, you know, yeah. I know. Me, so I mean, I'm I not know. Jump, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not giving you a hard time about it. No, no, I no, no, appreciate no. your being honest and being able to say, hey, wait a minute. I experienced jealousy, mm -hmm. you know, when I really yeah. wanted to be someone that, you know, was yeah. a teacher right. of certain, but you still are. This is what I'm trying to say. There's no, oh, yeah. there's oh, so no, much. I'm fine with yeah. that. Yeah, I'm fine with, you know, no, I, I completely know that I, you know, I don't know, I guess it is kind of jealousy, you know, it's, it's like, well, well how did you do that? Or, you know, why didn't I think of that first or something? But we all okay. have an aspect to bring. Oh, yeah, but it's perfectly fine. And I'm so, you know, I'm really, I'm actually really glad um, that it kind of gets brought up because is at this point, just really at such a such basic level for me. Um, that I can recognize it just as this one thing. It's not 10 things that I'm not, you know, it's, it's not anymore. Um, it's an emotion of, of envy, um, which is not in alignment with being unconditional necessarily. Um, so, you know, that just tells me that I'm heavily balanced in this one area. And so I need to start <clears throat> doing things or, or uh, cre creating, because we're such creators. Our, our words, our, the tones we have, um, magic all day long. Um, and if you know what, you know, magic isn't David Copperfield coming to your house. Magic is, you know, uh, everybody smiling at you because you wish everybody is having a great day and they, they, then they have a great day, you know, and, and that's the that's the fun magic that's out there for us to experience and and to use and and as we get better at using our words and our and our drawings and our whatever 
um, uh, the, the more it will catch on fire and the more, you know, even if it's just for five minutes, even if it's just five minutes that everybody in one place is happy. Yeah. That's great. Just that's all I need. But I, I would, I would highly encourage, I mean, this is just a suggestion. I would worry about making everybody else happy, Amy. And I would definitely oh, no. yeah. for my amusement yeah. no, i want to be yeah. happy i want everybody around me to be happy for five minutes i want that right. i want that for me but you know the more, then, but what what i'm prepared to say to you is and i know that well I, in my own experience that when i'm a joy-filled happy content safe in my own body person mm -hmm. in which i am mm -hmm. uh i attract more people like myself to me Right. Now, I do have some that come to me that's, you know, that reach mm -hmm. out to me for uh, help and guidance and so forth. But on, on a whole, for the most part, the people that I surround myself with are very fun, loving, you know, people. Life doesn't have to mm -hmm. be serious all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I and used to, there was a time when life was real serious for me because I was you know, I'm just coming out of this process of the dark night of the soul of my own experiences and having mm -hmm. to face my own darkness and come to terms with where I was giving my power away. And mm -hmm. so you have an opportunity through your art um, to really bring some uh, visual idea of m what multidimensional beings look like, what yeah, uh, so I've been drawing, I've been drawing since we've been chatting. And um I well I'm curious to see so, if you're willing to yeah, share. Um, let's see. I don't know. Let's see where the camera is. Okay, so this is that's oh. pretty awesome. I like so that. what we got so far. Yeah. Which is really that's beautiful. I don't know what it what what would you what what I don't know. so where do where is that coming from? Like what, what is it that's given that image? Well, that's you know, gorgeous. My, thought, my, my thought is, my thought is that it's, um, um, it's, it's uh, taking root and it's seeding. Um, but I'm not quite sure what it is. So, um, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So. I think that's beautiful. I mean, it looks like some type of either symbol or a um well even dna yeah uh, but yeah it would it would yeah i mean I, I would it's not like the helix like the uh yeah. but it it looks like it's something along the lines of well and you know one of the things one of the things i've learned too um because I didn't understand when I started drawing what that actually meant. So I would go and find other people who were drawing spontaneously too and see what things meant for them. So I have a whole group of friends that, you know, over the last 10 years we've kind of progressed. It was uh, <laughs> one girl I was talking to. I said, why, uh, why aren't you drawing? You need to be drawing. And she lived in England and she went and, um, like two days later, she sent me a picture. She's like, I've never painted in my life. And she sent me a picture of this huge mermaid that she had painted up on her hallway um, where she'd have to get a ladder and, you know, get up there to paint. And I'm, she's like, I've never drawn anything in my life. So it's, it's been really fun to, to kind of watch um, how, you know, the, the drawing bug um, unfolds for everybody. Um, there's, you know, my drawings um, are a lot of the process that we're experiencing now where we are um, um, going, you know, really kind of cutting it close to the, to the end of things where uh, we don't, you know, we don't go back to sleep again. Uh, after we leave this planet, we come back with our consciousness intact. Um, which would be an evolutionary leap, really, for mankind and and really where we've all been wanting to go. But in order for that to, to do that, we've got to bring that magic here on Earth. Um, and so this drawing right here looks like it's seeding. Um, it's got some uh, portal energy and it's also got some of the DNA uh, things. 
uh, that I usually draw, like this right here will be a portal energy. And then these shapes right here always um, are seeded or, or, or new growth and seeding. And I found that um, other people who draw also will draw these shapes. So now the, yeah, that's the, pretty awesome. Yeah, I, the, I think, I, you know, anything creative is really just so good mm -hmm. for us and really pleasing to our soul. We, our soul wants to create. Yeah. Even well, and the more you create or our decorating mm -hmm. or, you know, some people think, you know, I mean, just putting up, you know, arranging a flower pot, like anything mm -hmm. that brings beauty and some, mm -hmm. you know, some people like drawing dark, you know, mm -hmm. more. But that's, but that's okay side. too. Though. Yeah. 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 That's okay too. You know, of even though it it's, is. you know, and you know what might be dark to you isn't dark to somebody else you that's know right. that's and, right and i'm i'm so glad that people are starting to kind of come into their own too because i think that so many people get shut down um when they try and seek information uh when when this stuff happens i i i firmly believe that we are evolving i have no doubt that we are um, uh, illuminating ourselves here on earth. Um, I think that it's a physical process that has a lot of different manifestations um, and a lot of different symptoms. And I think that um, people are starting to realize that they're not the only one that is having their heart ignite. Um, but it's a big night of the soul, too. You have to go through so many of the dark things, um, which is really just forgiveness of self. Um, all those dark things like, how do, why did I put myself in that position? Well, to be honest, I wanted to experience what it would be like to be in that position, you know, and, and, and even though it didn't turn out well or what, you know, or whatever, I had the experience and it was one more thing of what I'm not. And, and I can walk away from it and, and, you know, um, well, the I, easiest I, thing for me to come to terms with, and, and one of my soul sisters, Miss Karen Starr or Gemma Starr, I will call her Gemma. Um, <laughs> she is pretty amazing. And she, she, um, mm -hmm. she writes and she does poetry and so forth. And, mm -hmm. uh, at every turn, at some level, we agree to certain things prior to coming in. Mm -hmm. And I don't, there's an aspect of me that fully understands that or understands that. And then there's an aspect of me still that I am coming to terms with and integrating where I don't know how much of what we agreed to prior to coming mm -hmm. in and what was forced on us or what was truly not um part of our soul lessons that was uh mm -hmm. projected onto us but i think it's so important to we have to stand up for ourselves we can't yes. be just okay i forgive and it's you know you have to be able to speak and protect yourself and speak with mm -hmm. authority right and i'm just getting my voice back as much yeah. as people would say, oh, Ida, you know, there's still parts of me that are still going through integration and healing mm -hmm. and, um, you know. And, and I, you know, that might never end, you know. It, it, I don't it, know that, it, you know, again, I don't think we ever arrived. One thing I know for sure mm -hmm. is change is def a definite and yeah. it never ends. You know, well, we do, we we go through these different deaths and rebirths in our life, a e huge ego death. I feel like I've been going through for, you know, especially, I mean, I I've gone through many, but I just feel like the a humbling mm -hmm. of my, there's just, there's parts of me that I feel like I don't know how to get to, to right. really. Yeah. And right. So um, you have to trust yourself that, that, that you've, you're taking care of those parts, even if you can't actualize them. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, I know I have a soul, 
I, you know, we all, I know that, you know, but how, how is this voice coming out of me, the soul that is this, you know, how, how does that, how does that what do you work? mean that's and, this? What do you mean? I don't know. Well, understand. you know, um, how how do you express your soul through a distorted point of view? Meaning, um, not I think using when we're other- spontaneous and we're in the moment, like you and I are right now. Yeah. That's where pure intent, pure, our true soul self yeah. can express itself when, when mm-hmm. we're looking to, you know, uh, um, present ourselves a certain way to be, right. you know, seen in a certain light rather than just simply being authentic and genuine and who you are. Uh, I think it's important and I, and I love these kinds of conversations. That's why I keep my, my show pretty, you know, basic Mm -hmm. and like nothing stiff because we need to be able to have a place to have just general, these kinds of conversations, people bringing your type of creativity to the forefront and say, Hey, there are, you know, these, Mm -hmm. this is what I've, I've created to bring in what I am able to see from my mind's Mm -hmm. eye, my higher self soul self so that i can share it with the world and maybe it will by people seeing your art may ignite something in them for either healing or more Mm -hmm. self-awareness or an expanded consciousness whatever it might be yeah yeah but when you're in the moment and being spontaneous and not that's when we're coming from our true authentic self that's how i feel yeah. My my rule of thumb and what I tell other people too is if I know what I'm going if I know what to expect, if I know the end end of it, then I have done it before and um, I'm repeating a mistake or I'm being redundant. Just that I don't know what's going to happen, I don't know what we're going to talk about, it does leave you to be more creative. And it really kind of rolls through that black void of 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 what it's supposed to be because there's no expectations there's no preconceived notions um you know even the interactions that we've had together can't predict you know the the whole you know i mean no of course yeah i mean so nobody how, ha- i don't care who you are you could be jesus right. or a buddha or a, whoever nobody has the full complete we all have an right. aspect of the divine that we bring forward to the best of our ability, our pure soul intention, and everybody doesn't have the same intent. And I'd like to make that clear. I mean, from my perspective, you know, everybody's like all love and light and everything. It's not that I don't want love and light, and I do bring a lot of light. I am light. I am a Leo, and I am very, I hold my light. If you understand this is a process, and that people have to go through the process, however that looks like for them, You know, it could be, you know, well, my it, point it is, you become king of the world. What I'm tra- it could be, it could be yeah. you end up homeless in, in the middle of the Ozark Mountains. You know, you just don't know um, what it is. But by allowing them to, to kind of come to their own um, understanding and, 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 and then supporting them through that understanding, because some of it's well, I really think we smart. need to get ourselves in check before we want to be saviors right. or helpers to anybody. Let me, and well, nobody could be. save anybody. Well, this no. is, this is what I, this is what I've been trying to say is that yeah. we have to take self-responsibility at every turn period right. and get ourselves right before, you know, well, they say the best healers are the ones that have healed themselves. Right. But right. we also get right. to a point where it's like, okay, I've done a lot of inner work. I've done a lot of releasing. I've done a lot of the, you know, shadow work. Mm-hmm. And at some point you just stand up and you say, okay, you know, this is, right. this is what, what's worked for me. It might not necessarily work for somebody else, but we can yes. share information and help guide people right. and so forth. But I see a lot of people, especially know. in the spiritual community, they want to be a savior. They want to be seen as this special, you know, whatever. And mm-hmm. I, well, I surely don't. I don't look for anybody that I always tell people return to your heart, get right with yeah. yourself. 
that's what I right. know for, for me. I had to get right with my own soul. Okay. Mm -hmm. And letting go of the ego, dropping, you know, and I'm not perfect. I'm not, you know, I still have a lot of ego there, driven. Yeah. You know, it's, it's probably, I have not met anyone, but when I met you, I don't know how to say this. Um, you are so genuine in all that you have done to be all that you are now. And um, I, it, you know, I know you've battled um, through things, um, but I don't even know how to. Amy, thank I, you. I don't even know how I to picture. Or, that. Yeah. How, you know, I just, I just don't, you, you're very, um, all you're yourself and you're 100% who you are. And I, you know, I, I don't expect you to be anything else than just that when I'm with that you. That is so kind. That is so, a very I, kind. I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really I just, do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I, you know, I, so I definitely know. make it my business to be who I am you know and sometimes that's not you know there's times when i'm not you know so easy to be around i can be well that's okay know, though yeah uh no, but okay. i'm definitely much further along than i was and i mm -hmm. i still again you know like i said i mean i have done a lot of a lot of shadow work but i also know that you know again there we never arrive so it's people mm -hmm. like yourself and other women that have come into my life that mm -hmm. give me the space or and I do that for them as well we give each other the opportunity just to come as we are without mm -hmm. any expectation without any judgment right. and to be able to hold boundaries with one another from a loving right. place but right. being assertive because mm -hmm. I don't want people in my life that are not direct and assertive and speak their mind you're not helping me and I'm surely not going to help you if I'm exactly. you know everything is whatever but we know that we're coming from a, a place that is not mm -hmm. where I, I don't look to be hurtful to anybody right my and i can never be hurtful with my words but that we need to be able to be direct and right and, yeah and, and speak, yeah and these conversations are important to have um so that we show other people how to be respectful to one another it's right. it's really not about that you can it's how and and you know we've given up that power um to so many people you know television teaches us how to be respectful for people um the rules you learn at, in the books and the everything show you but but they don't really um teach you the real magic of it is to be respectful to yourself as well and, 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 and so it's easy for, to manipulate us. So I think it's really important as we come into our own power um, and our, and it's okay to say, you know, I just feel like being a shitty person today. I just, you know, I'm going to be the best shitty person I can be. I'm going to get it out of my system. You know, I need to rebalance something. And I'm just, I don't think I've ever there. said that to myself before, but I guess on a subconscious level, maybe I, you know, I've never looked, I usually, if I, if I know that I'm in a funky mood, like there's mm -hmm. something going on, I I withdraw. I go into hermit because I always mm -hmm. know that it's about me and it has nothing to do with anybody else. Now I do know, you know, I'm the youngest of twelve kids, Amy, and oh, wow. uh, yeah, I'm the youngest of twelve, and um, you know, it's very difficult to be heard growing up in a family of twelve. And I'm it, sure it has been. Yeah, well, I mean. Um, that's been a, you know, a big issue, but I am also a Leo and an Aquarius rising and Aquarius mm -hmm. moon. I am a, I talk, I am an outgoing person. I am a, mm -hmm. I bring a lot of energy with me wherever I go. I bring me and mm -hmm. that can be a bit overbearing for some. Now I know I've reeled it back a bit. Um, you know, as I've gotten older, I've, and I also, you know, I've always been pretty blunt and wide open and i've learned that some people uh it's probably best not to share you know i have to be a little bit more selective in who i allow in my energy field i will say that 
And it's not about fear of anything. It's saying, no, I want people like myself or well, someone that's... I can learn from, or I can, you know, where it's reciprocal. We can learn from each other. I don't want to save anybody. And I surely am not looking for anyone to save me, you know? So, you know, and, and I completely agree with that. Um, I do, however, want to model the behavior that allows people to consider um, things in a different way. Um, That's a wonderful know. way you just said that. That's right. Where we can yeah, so. conduct ourselves in a way that is more becoming, more mm -hmm. allowing, more kind, well, more, compassionate, more those things. Graceful, more full graceful. of grace. Graceful, there really. you go. That's lovely. Yeah, and, you know, you. it's like, I love the grocery store. The grocery store is my favorite place to go um, and, and, and intermix with people. Um, it doesn't matter who you are or how much money you have. If you're a woman, you're going to buy some Tampax. You know, mm -hmm. we're all equal there. You know, you, you go to the store um, because you're, you know, just as well, hopefully like, not everybody's doing Tampax. that, Amy, because Tampax well, is yeah. very toxic for you. And by the way, I'm 53. I don't have to worry about those things anymore. I know, I don't either. I know that. I know you're, I know where you're going with that. The point is, yeah. I uh, get you it. You know, but everybody's the same. Everybody's there because they want to feed their family or, you know, sometimes yeah, the poor, we hurt. all want the same thing. Safety, mm -hmm. safety, uh, healthy family, well, loving right. relationships, <laughs> respectful ones. So, yeah. yeah, so in the I grocery store, so in the grocery store, I'd love to go and be unconditionally compassionate, or um, that's where I'll go practice on people. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll read their energy field for a minute. And, and you know, like an example would be um, a, a mother whose kid is throwing a fit on the floor. And I might walk by going, oh, you know what? I left mine at home because yours and mine would be a best friends. And, and really, you know, all that's really doing is acknowledging to the mother that, Hey, don't worry about it. We all have these terrible tantrums to, you know, throw and you're not the only one. And it's just kind of like that reconnection. Um, whoops, that reconnection that allows people to, um, be themselves just for a minute and for that mother it might be the mother that says oh for the love of god get up you know yeah. um it, it it might be that she just that's the permission that she needs to be herself enough to change the dynamic of the experience for her yeah yeah uh, yeah. yeah so so I, let's get back to your um not to i appreciate everything you just said but so do you want to yeah, share a couple of your like uh your art and give us the backstory of like have you okay let me ask you this have you been contacted like have you experienced having beings where you've been contacted and had uh you um, know, recollection of it or i okay so 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 when my mother died um and she she blew out her soul out of her last breath it went through me and i had a physical reaction and the physical reaction ended up being um and it's taken me years to understand um uh the the what happened is my electromagnetic field uh, got broken for a minute which allows um the the um veils to drop and um so i just lost you i don't know if you can see that um so um um so i started drawing and it, it, it was more like feeling it was more like so wait I, a minute so wait a minute you just said that your mother soul injured you is that what you just said it keep your microphone keeps going off. Yeah. Um, Is that yeah. what you said? Your mother's soul injured you? I think so. I don't really know exactly what happened, but um, she breathed out. I breathed in at the same time. And I was probably, you know, probably just this far away from her. Um, well, I, I went through I that with my mother. She didn't enter me, but she, she sat up and released her 
spirit and I watched it go. Yeah. But it, yeah, didn't, I, it I, did not, I would never let another spirit into me. That, oh, well, I, I yeah. yeah. Well, hey, uh, Brady, well, I'm not saying, I'm, I, oh, yeah. I didn't mean right, it like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, right before this, you know, I, I, but I'm just wondering. I mean, that's fascinating. So you yeah. feel that she entered your body? I'm not saying there's anything right, went, wrong, good or bad with that. I, just, I don't know. I don't know, um, to be quite honest. Why do you think she entered you, though? Why do you think she entered because you? Because it felt like dry ice on my spine on the inside. Interesting. Okay. It, it, it was at my solar plex. And, um, and uh, but see, I had had experiences for the three days before that i call it her resurrection period okay. um but like the the first night um the first experience i had there was a light on the corner of the ceiling and the seam of the ceiling and we were in hospice and so there was no you know it's very light no you know yeah. um no lights it was it was you know in the early in the morning and she was sleeping and um she was whining and i i knew that her her body was hurting and so she was responding to that. So I called into bed with her and um, I, she had been kind of tracking something on the ceiling. And so, um, so I started paying attention to where she was tracking and, and um, see, I was so exhausted. So I don't know what's real and, you know, what, so, so anyway, so we're in there and um, this light is up in the scene in the ceiling and, and as she's breathing in, the light kind of goes away. Um, but as she breathes out, then it comes this way, like it's like it's replacing the air. And so I was watching this, and I had just gotten to the point where I was being able to, um, uh, from example, keep up with how many times this light would appear versus she was, you know, I was just starting to get the hang of it. And the nurse came in and I jumped out of bed. Um, I was embarrassed. So I was laying, you know, I didn't know if I was laying on something or, or whatever. And so I got out of bed and that was day number one. Day number two, you know, they come back and uh, usually um, come back, visit their body one more time. There's still soul attached. Um, but they come back down and, and this is where they would come and they might be uh, talking gibberish. In my case, it was my mom and she took a breath and she goes, oh, Amy, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Amy, I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. And uh, so I thought real quick, oh, what do you mean home? Not like heaven home you know i thought she was talking about her house in wisconsin growing up and so i asked her i'm like is this your house and friendship and she said oh yes and then i said okay well you know there's people waiting for you you need to go inside and and so we go inside and you know just a split second not even you know she's like oh mother oh dad and and she starts naming other relatives that she doesn't really speak of very often and she starts describing the pie that they're eating and then tells me a poem about pie and ice and cheese because they're from wisconsin but cheese on pie and yeah, we did um, that huh? Huh? cheddar apple. cheese on apple pie i love it yeah yeah and um and so uh she named all the pie and then that was it and then the last day um which was the day after christmas um and, and as she got closer to um, taking her final breath and I was sitting there and I'm an only child, so it was just me. My husband was yeah. in the corner and then the hospice nurse was on the other side of the bed. And um, she took uh, her second to last breath and blew it out. And again, I was laying with her um, and, and laying next to someone who is dying is um, not easy because their organs start shutting down. So it's a very unique smell um to go with it but but i sat there and um she breathed out and it hit me and i remember sitting back up and taking it like that and um then i blacked out for a few some part some time and um it was cold and it was um physical and um and it caught my breath and um 
when I when I was able to open when I came back, um, the nurse, my husband was one side and the nurse was on the other. So they had actually physically moved on the room. So I had to bend out for a second or two. Um, and I, I breathed out one more time and then she breathed one more time. Um, and that was it. And then um, um, <laughs> she, she was very particular about her things. She liked her things. She didn't want her things to go anywhere until she was ready to give up her things. And she still wasn't ready to give up her things. Um, but when, I had a dream um, one night and she was in a wheelchair. She had a stroke when I was in high school. So she lived in, um, in a broken body from the time she was 47 till she was 73. And she lived alone. Um, but uh, Annie Dorothy, she would call every Sunday. And, and when, um, after mom died, Annie Dorothy died. And, and um, I, that night I had a dream and mom came and she was in her wheelchair and um, she was looking for her dog, Tony, who was this 27 year old poodle, and, literally. And, um, um, you know, I saw her down the hall, mom, what are you doing? So, and she was with Annie Dorothy and Annie Dorothy died that day. Um, so I got a phone call later uh, the next day about it. So I, I had no doubt that I was seeing in a different realm. Um, my drawing started trying to explain things and it started more like echolocation. Like I would just draw and not pay any attention to what I'm drawing. It was really automatic channeling. Um, and, and that drove me to find more answers because I had um, um, no, no reason to draw or want to draw or have any knowledge about any of this stuff. And as I, as I started diving into it more, um, I've noticed lately when I go back and I see old drawings um, that um, they were really scattered and the energy that I was drawing 10 years ago um, was not well compiled. And really I'm, you know, now I look at it and go, I was drawing six separate things, not one drawing. It was six separate shapes or six something on, on whatever. Um, but there's people that I started drawing with years ago that are now really sure about what they're doing. Um, and, you know, one of, one of them has left her regular job and is now teaching art, you know, um, she draws energy, um, beings, um, and, and she makes them out energy of energy beads, beings, um, beings, beings. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they look like stick figures, um, but they're they're not. They're um, I, I saw it not too long ago. Uh, Jordan Peterson had a had a video um, where they had been able to um, to to, to record so, DNA. Yeah, and and um, the shapes that you find in this DNA that you can watch this video of are the same shapes that she draws, are the same shapes that I draw. And so I find, um, I find no mistake in that, you know, so. Okay, uh, so I initially asked you and you, and which is no issue, you were talking about your mother and your, and your auntie, and that's lovely. But I <laughs> asked you, do you, did, have you been contacted? And you never answered me. So have you been contacted? Well, no. No, I mean, I've had dreams where I've had a procession, um, and I have drawings of beings that I've drawn but not seen. You know, um, well, you're uh, seeing them. You're seeing them in your conscious. So, so in my so, mind's eye. Yeah, yeah. Well, check this out, though, Amy. Everything that's happening, including you and I, right now, is in your mind's eye. Right. It's in your consciousness. It's not out there somewhere. There is no right. out there. When you drop to zero point, there is nothing outside of you. Everything is That's you. True. Right. I, I'm just saying. So, yeah. so I you are, I haven't had but, but you haven't physically had an experience where somebody was, no. uh, is what you're saying. You haven't had no that no, you can I've recall. That you can recall. Do you think right. you've been contacted or? I mean, I'm not trying to like, I'm not no, trying to no, get you to I'm say trying something. To, I'm trying to, you know, I went to, I, 
yes, I think I've met people um, that operate on a whole different level. Um, but they have always looked like human beings. Sometimes okay. they look like odd human beings um, mm -hmm. because they're very tall, you know, like seven foot tall. Um, yeah. um, you know, especially when there's a family of seven foot tall of them, you know, um, one day I was in Disney World. Is there a uh, place here in Florida nearby that they have a place where like, you just made me think of something. There's a, do you know what I'm talking about? It's a, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a place where people, it's, um, it's like a community of people. Oh, Casadega. I don't know what the name of it is, but evidently Cas it's a community of people that are That's a bit Casadega. different. Yeah. What That's is Casadega. that? There's a spiritualist community. No, I've never been there. We're all actually, there's a whole bunch of us that are going to go do a field trip. You should come with us. Okay. Um, um, I will yeah. make sure you let me know. I mean, I definitely will. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Better if we can do it on the weekday too, because then it would be more just us. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, Casadega. Yeah. No, we're good, like actively like within the next month or so, we'll probably try and go down there. But they're a spiritual community. They moved down here from New York. And um, I'm not really sure what their main theory was. Um, I read a lot of theosophy. T H O T H E O S P H Y, um, which is a white, well, it's like a white magic universe um, mediumship type theories of why things happen. I, I, um, most, so um, I don't know why I brought that up, but so I don't know what. Casadega. I don't know if they're like based on theosophy or what. Um, I do know that I've there's places down there I've never been, but there's a house I know I need to go to. Um, I even know the address of it. It's on Colby Lane or Colby Road, um, and it's Blue House. So I'm trying I know to I remember who it was that brought it to my awareness and they said that they had some odd experiences. I can't remember who it was. Well, I think well if if there's if there is a type of um, spiritual anything, there's a person down there that represents it. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I mean, so, you know, I mean, people can, you know, there's different. Everybody has the right to. Uh, worship however they choose to or believe right. in whatever they choose to or whatever mm -hmm. my thing is that you know if you're misleading or misguiding people or or for your own self-serving purposes yeah. um that's not you know i don't do well with that and i will pick up on it quickly if yeah yeah um everybody everybody that's down there i've had so so I have, so one of the things that I started investigating was channeling, right? And, and what is a channel and who channels because, you know, this is a channel. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so we're so lucky. I don't, I've met so many amazing people here in town. Um, we, we live on a magnetic anomaly here in Jacksonville. Um, so it's interesting who that attracts and, um what theories and practices come with those people? Well, and I don't think it's everywhere in Jacksonville because I'll tell you, I've gone to Lawrence Park and I can feel the dense, heavy energy mm -hmm. there. I mean, it's like going through a, like cutting through a knife. Like I can mm -hmm. feel from going from one spot to another, the mm -hmm. dense, you know, where the energy will drop and the dense, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so I think Mandarin for the most part is a very, you know, there's a lot of high vibe and, but it has mm -hmm. its points. I energetically can pick up and feel them. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, well, and, and, and really, yeah, you know, it's our job, not our job, but, you know, a job to go in there and be the light, you know, and, 
and be kind and be nice and and it will all well, being neutral up. is the smart thing being neutral yeah. without judgment and mm -hmm. allowing people to be just exactly who they are they will mm -hmm. show you rather than tell you and believe it mm -hmm. my thing is is i wanted to not believe what i was seeing because i went straight for the heart believing that i could turn the hearts of people around and everybody is not there. And I don't try to do that anymore. People, yeah. it's not my place to change anybody. I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I respect that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People yeah. show up when they're ready. It's like the, you know, they'll show up when they're ready. In all my in all my years of, ch of going up and chatting to people, um, I I have never knock on wood never had anybody uh, be upset with yeah. me, um, which yeah. surprises me um, because I've had people I definitely take it back. When I first had my awakening, you best believe I was talking to every man, woman, and child mm -hmm. from the street corner hustler to the mm -hmm. it wouldn't have mattered the freaking could have been the air force mm -hmm. freaking general whatever I don't care. I wanted everybody to know what I became aware of and I wanted some answers and I was angry. Well, more mm -hmm. than angry, I was just in shock. Like well, I yeah, and, and you think you're going crazy too. Yeah. And, 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 and then you get some type of grounding where maybe you're not so crazy. Somebody might understand what you're asking and then they turn out to be an asshole and then you're like, you know, well, the point is, is once you have the awakening, well, I, yeah. my initial, I mean, I think I came in awake and I think th that's why I was targeted so terribly, but yeah. I will say that, uh, I don't think I know I came in awake and I was targeted and I have some memory, but anyways, um, I, you know, you get to a point where, okay, you become aware of all these things and then you you know, I went through the stage of wanting to save the world and I felt like it was mm -hmm. my responsibility to save everybody and, you know, mm -hmm. couldn't understand why other people weren't able to see the things I was seeing or becoming aware or knowing the things I know or, became, you know, but my I had to get to a point where I had to let go, like I could, I could share information with people. Right. But I had to really come to terms with a lot because I just didn't know how to reach people in, mm -hmm. in a productive way that wasn't going to scare the shit out of them oh, yeah. or project my own traumas onto them. My mm -hmm. own, you know, and I've had been seriously challenged with my family behind that. Um, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I, my, <laughs> I think I'm, I you know I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty sure my dad went to his grave thinking I was a meth head or something, you know, yeah. you know, or just I just well, you best just, believe that he knows that you're not now. Oh uh, yeah, just, yeah. You, and you know, yeah. and I couldn't explain it to him either. You know, why are he'd say why would you why are you even bringing why are you even talking about why would you mention this or. Or I well, know, a lot I of people have cognitive dissonance, and they don't want to know the truth because yeah. it breaks. Because see, what happens is, is when people get become okay. Now I'm having a real high pitch sound. This is confirmation. <laughs> My whole ear is going off. People don't want to know the truth, and um, okay, there's a reason why I'm getting that. So I must have said something that I need to maybe hold on it causes a lot of uh challenges in family units when one person wakes up and you want to tell your family or you want to share information you become aware of not mm -hmm. to scare them but to say hey you know these are things when people have cognitive dissonance or they're in complete denial, it's usually because they don't want to have to step up and take responsibility for themselves. Yeah. And I can admit, you know, I didn't know how to do it for myself. Like mm -hmm. I was, uh, well, you know, I had to really have a look. I mean, some really, but that's things that's that I denied things that I, 
I, what I'll say, to Amy, is everything I judged in other people, I became. Mm -hmm. Short of, I've never harmed a child or molested somebody, but I used my body in many ways that weren't so becoming. I've done mm -hmm. things that I'm not proud of. Of course, these are, mm -hmm. it's been years. And I'm so thankful that I've gotten to a place where I can say, you know what? Yeah, I made some bad choices, but I learned so much. Right. And I'm so thankful. And I know right. I didn't like it, but right. I'm glad I learned. And it allows me to be able to have compassion for the next person. That's why, That's exactly you know, right. yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, yeah. and, and really you're wanting that person to have compassion with you too, because you have this mutual, uh, it's a, it's experience. an understanding. It's a, it's yeah. an understanding. It's a knowing it's a, yes. it's a respect that I respect mm -hmm. you right where you're at. Right. Now, would I allow somebody to do harm in front of me and just stand there and look, well, you know, no. I, did, I, I had such uh, my own self lack, lack of self-worth and discipline mm -hmm. and value that I watched horrible things happen before me that were so mm -hmm. traumatizing, not a victim here, but right. at the time it was shot. It was the way I didn't know mm -hmm. how to respond right. or react. Right. So right. I would shut down and, you know, right. I don't do that today. I yeah. speak up. Yeah. And, and, and it's, and it's hard and, you know, watching you be brave um, helps other people to be brave, even if yeah. they're not brave in the same way. It's yeah. not, it's not the topic of bravery. It's the act of the compassion of bravery um, and, and what that means to you. It's, it's, um, you know, and other people want to have that for themselves as well. And yeah. I know very well that it just takes, you know, just a couple of words sometimes um, from yourself yeah. or from a, you know, it doesn't even matter where it comes from yeah. um, to, to make those lives. And that's really what this evolution is about. It's not, you know, they'll, these new age people will say, oh, it's high, raise your high vibration, but they don't tell you really what that means because they haven't quite figured it out yet either um you know it's it's not everybody can vibrate at this thing well really what it is is it's a balance of knowing yourself and, and the energy of who you are uh coming off and and realizing that you're not going to be a great person 100 percent of the time well We're no that's part of that. the human experience i right. agree right. but we can get to well this is the thing and i appreciate everything you just said when you can get to a place where you are neutral and you can let go, you know, people mm -hmm. say, oh, I don't judge. Yes, you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. We all do. Mm -hmm. And, but there's a difference in you have to, okay. So when I say judge, we have to be able to discern and make right. choices so right. that, you know, when it's fire, you don't go walk in fire. You have to be able to use discernment, but not judgment in in a way that is condescending or belittling to other people but to say let me make a a call on this one uh, use my discernment call it judgment discernment whatever there is a difference but we have to be able to you know make conscious intelligent mm -hmm. choices for ourselves right. we can't just and, you know yeah and, and and but but coming from a place of neutrality where You know, not you see things kind of from both sides of the fence, right? You can mm -hmm. see it from both sides of the fence and make a neutral observation rather than going into judgment, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And observation is the key word there, too. And, um, you know, stopping for a second to observe what is happening um, before you participate in what's happening, even, even in just this dialogue right here. Um, you know, can change the whole dynamic and, and you know, the whole puzzle um, and the whole entangle entanglement. I mean, we're, we're all entangled together and, and you know, just a, a, a quick tweak in how somebody carries themselves um, can change the entire dynamic of everything. Absolutely, and then I agree. Your yeah. whole experience. And so, when you can be an observer and, and stop and, and recognize the observation 
period first. Um, you know, we don't think, always do that, and that's part you know, of learning how to master yourself. Because yeah, yeah, uh, I I do pretty well at this point where I can pull myself back, but I'm not perfect in it. Like things happen, and especially when we're around people that you know, especially mm -hmm. in in family dynamics where there's been a lot of hurt oh, yeah. or trauma or trauma bonding and uh you know we you know I, we, i'm listening to my kids and i'm listening to me you know uh, manipulate my little one through feeling guilty because i didn't want to do something and i yeah. i caught myself doing that yesterday and i'm like oh crap you know but I'm you're like, aware of it and it's something yeah. so that's fabulous that you're yeah, yeah. i think yeah. about things too when i do things it's like <laughs> Why is it hard for me to ask for what I want or need? Normally it's not, but if I'm, you know, in certain situations, it's like, mm -hmm. it's difficult to say, Hey, wait a minute. This is what I want for myself. Mm -hmm. And, and I, it, it's not to impede or intrude on right. anybody else's stuff, but for myself, this is what mm -hmm. feels good and safe for me. And I'm learning to practice this little bit more and more. And yep. part of that is, setting boundaries with family friends mm -hmm. everybody because mm -hmm. i'm at the point it's not that i don't care of course i love i care deeply about my family and friends that well, i've been friends no, with for a long time. No one any good if you guys get together and all you do is have feel this way and well, that no way. no i've been i i i have there's been a lot of manipulation going on uh because of the lack of self-responsibility and crossing other people's boundaries people crossing mm -hmm. my boundaries not really knowing how to have healthy boundaries right because it's always been you know i've dealt with things a certain way i choose not to do anymore yeah. and i'm not yeah and realizing that a lot of my relationships are based around trauma bonding mm -hmm. that doesn't mean i don't love people and i'm you know I do Scared love my family experience. very much, but, but you get to a point, let me just say this, and there's a reason I'm saying this, because I think it's affects a lot of people in their families. You mm -hmm. know, you get to a point in your life where you realize it's not selfish to respect and honor yourself and choose yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it for a long time because I felt like I was letting my family down or letting friends down not just family, friends, other people. Mm -hmm. I finally am now so okay with taking care of Ida and not worrying about everybody else. I don't have it in me anymore. I don't want to. I don't want the responsibility. I really so don't. Liberating. It's so liberating. It's very liberating. Mm -hmm. And it's going to continue being liberating. It doesn't mean I don't, and I keep saying this because I, not that I'm trying to convince myself. It's not that I don't care. I've cared to the, the to the point of my own detriment, and I'm not willing to do that anymore. I yep. put everything and everybody before my own well being, my whole life, which which really does nobody any good at all. Well, no. And then yeah. there was a selfish part of me that my addiction, you know, because I was uh, I lived quite an auspicious life, and I'm just so past the stories. I'm past. I'm not the person I used to be. And I haven't been for a long time. And I think, you know. Well, I'm uh, so glad because now we're friends. Yes, Amy. I didn't know and you I, then. And I, I know think you you're know. awesome. And I love talking to you. Oh, good. I, like I do. To I enjoy talking to you. And I know that you're doing amazing stuff. And I appreciate you. You know, it's nice to have somebody to, to be able to connect with and talk to and go and it have really lunch. Is. We, we got to make it to that. Yeah. Down Make the street, the, literally. Yeah. yeah. Right down. She, she, her, her, your, your salon is is a mile and a half away from my house. Um, down, yeah. down the street. Just that's it. I could well, ride my bike down there. And definitely make that. I didn't realize it's eight thirty seven. So, oh, yeah. let's uh let's start. Um. Well, well, you want to share I, any any contact information where people can reach you? Uh, do well, you offer any services that maybe uh, people could contact you to get maybe drawings done? Or um, I am happy to chat with anybody anytime. 
Um, you have my name up on the thing, and that's how you can find me on Facebook. Um, okay. I um, My art is, most of my art is up on my regular Facebook page, um, but I also have Divine Abstract. Um, I've only ever sold one um, painting or one anything to anybody, and, and that was for the name, Divine Abstract. Um, so I kept that. Um, but I actually am going to be starting a new um, uh, show like this um, on a network called BB3, and um, it's going to be called Perspectives from the Parking Lot. So pretty much um, going to be talking about things that I do um, in the grocery stores and then what comes out of it. Like uh, tonight, I've heard several words that I've heard mentioned, you know, uh, in the last couple of days. And discernment is a big one lately, which means that it's out there in the unity consciousness flow and um, as, a, as a learning um, availability to people. So sure. I, I want to sit back and go and daydream about what that actually means and watch how it flows um, through everybody um and uh well i, I, think I mean we cool. definitely got big portal i mean you know we have uh the, the new moon the blood moon i think it is yeah um, i i i've never taken a whole lot of time to learn that stuff because i've always had friends that were really good at it so i just let them be good at it well yeah um, me too i mean i'm not a uh don't although i i definitely know that i do a lot in the astral realms and i do i do my work yeah. Well, well I've been paying multidimensionally well, for sure, but well, I've been I don't paying attention how that energy flows in and then how that translates through things and manifests through people and and you know trying to understand how that works so that you can have a better idea of how to um how to put yourself in what you want to be in more. Um yeah. go with the flow. You just gotta find the right flow. But um so you want to share your things? art with us, what you've drawn. Yeah. This is, I, you know, let's see. Yeah. So this is, that's really beautiful. Yeah. I think that's what beautiful. Came down. I will, this is for you. So I'll drop this by probably tomorrow. Oh, gonna, that's very kind. Yeah. So I would love and, that. Yeah. I'll, 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 um, yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you, um, Amy. Yeah. I'll give you some color. the bottom of it. I'll put it in a frame. There you go. Yeah, you're more than welcome to do whatever you want with it. It, it well, uh, I mean, it is, I if mean, you have any, is, if any words come to mind of what that might be, this is like the energy signature the of this conversation. Yeah, okay. this is the stamp of this conversation. Okay, which also well, Katie, it in. is multi dimensional art. Uh, mm -hmm. so and that's this conversation has been. Uh, we've, you know, we've mentioned many things and yes. you and I seem to do well in sharing our perspectives with each other and, and respecting one another. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, um, I think, but at the core, we definitely operate from the same value system mm -hmm. of being respectful and honorable to mm -hmm. each other and, and, you know, Did allowing each other to have mm -hmm. our own voices and we don't, have to agree with everything but we, we respect each other and and i appreciate you and i'm very thankful to have met you and i look forward to continuing to get to know you more and do work with you and maybe have you back on the show at a later date and we maybe should, after yeah we should and, do that uh, i've got plans for our neighborhood too so okay well um, i'd love to be a part of it um let me know if there's anything i could pitch in um and we'll talk but yep. we're going to go ahead and thank you. Um, thank you the, you're welcome. Thank you for coming Everything. on. Amy. I so appreciate, appreciate it. it. So and, um, guys, I have oh, yeah. um, vanilla lavender CBD, 200 milligrams, uh, refined shea butter, coconut oil. Um, this stuff is the best. Um, and then I also have cedarwood basil. So I did one in memory of my mother and one of my father the website and uh to order is on the screen uh it is my passion to get one of my passions to get everybody using uh getting off the pain mm -hmm. medicines onto using more natural and holistic ways of healing and cbd is a good you know these are good salves mm -hmm. um, they're 40 bucks 200 milligrams i do have a special running 
you get three for a hundred dollars. So you get two individual, two, 200 milligrams, 200 milligrams. And then I have uh, patchouli, sweet orange and lemongrass that does not have CBD. Uh, how, you many, be able to- how many ounces yeah. is it? These are um, two ounces. Nice, nice. In each jar. Um, I've had such good uh, feedback Mm-hmm. from my clients that have neuropathy and arthritis mm-hmm. and just the smell of them people you, but the resident manager here uses the patchouli one uh the sweet orange and lemongrass as like a, a perfume i mean it's so lovely and it lasts all day my skin's like stays dewy all day. i put it on this morning and you could still feel the softness and the dewiness the dewy feeling of my skin mm-hmm. from it it really is lovely and one oh, of yeah. these you know, if you've got minor aches and pains or deep tissue pain, it definitely would help. Yeah. So I I use I use that for um my restless leg syndrome at night. It it, yeah. it makes my legs stop. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Well, maybe you'll have to get one of mine and, and check it out and give me, yeah, let me know yeah, if you like definitely. it. Uh definitely. Yeah, these these are uh well when I see you, you'll I'm telling you, the smell of these is amazing. Um, even if you don't have pain, just to reintroduce CBD back into your, mm-hmm. or cannabinoids back into your body is a smart thing. You could do some research on it. Um, and so, yeah, there's a holiday special, guys. Go to the website, place your order. I'll get them sent out as soon as I see the orders. And Amy, again, thank you. Mm-hmm. I love having this discussion with you. And uh, people reach out to Amy on Facebook if you want to see more of our art. Uh, Facebook friend request her. And she'll yep. have her own show coming up. And I'd love to see that. I'd love to make sure you, yeah, get yeah, the information. And then you will have to be on it be on it too. You can sit with me in the Winn-Dixie parking lot and we can talk about things. Oh, uh, well, I'll do, <laughs> yeah, if I, can, I would love to be a guest, of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Amy, thank you for coming on. Have You're a great welcome. night. Thank you. All right. I love All you. Right. And I'll I talk to you, you later. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.